Welcome to the Fit Face Podcast. I'm your host, Harrison Zocker, and this is the number one podcast for balancing social life and fitness. This is specifically for people that want to shape the body of their dreams without sacrificing their favorite drinks and foods while maintaining a social life outside of the gym. Thank you so much for being here. Let's get into today's episode. Welcome to episode number five of the Fit Face Podcast. I hope your day is going amazing, whether you're just waking up for the day or driving home from work, whatever it might be. I hope your day is going amazing. And today's topic of the episode was not the initial plan for the episode, but a client asked me the question of how do you stay motivated? And when he asked me that question, I immediately thought that this could be a great podcast episode. So I decided just to make it right away and give you guys some insight on how I answered it and also give you guys some tips on how you can overcome those times that you're not motivated because motivation is not always going, going to be there. It's not always going to be there. We cannot rely on motivation to get us to the goals that we set or see ourselves accomplishing. And what I believe is the main reason why it seems that we should always be motivated is because social media nowadays. There's so many people that we follow, influencers, fitness professionals, we just see them going through their journey and assuming that everything's going great their mind is always on top of the world. They're so pumped to go work out each and every day when in reality, that's that's not true. For example, me, during this past week, I did I, there was at least one to two times where I did not want to work out and I also pushed back meal prep a day. But I overcame those things and I'll give you guys some insight on what I relied on other than motivation to get me to do what I needed to do so I can reach the goals that I do have. But now I wanna give you guys the definition of motivation, I just Googled it. It's the general desire or willingness of someone to do something. So it's your general desire or willingness to work out, your general desire or willingness to meal prep. And since I've been using a lot of zero to 100 scales lately, let's do that right now. So maybe your motivation one day is 100 on wanting to go work out, which there are going to be days like that. And those are often the most fun workouts, but they don't always feel the most accomplished because the times that you feel the most accomplished after, after a workout is very often those days that you didn't want to go work out but afterwards you feel amazing because you got yourself to go do it and it just builds confidence so overcoming those times that you aren't motivated is so crucial in building that confidence and momentum and reminding yourself why you started chasing the goals that you have but the best time we need motivation is when we first start something. So with your health and fitness, when you first initially start a plan, a program, it's always a day, like when you commit to it, that day you're just feeling very motivated to do it. So you start and then you often feel like you should feel that way each and every day throughout your journey, but that will not happen. And that's why we cannot rely on motivation because over time, it'll it'll come and go, it'll fade, it'll drop down to 20 out of 100, and then all of a sudden, the next day, it might be 90 out of 100, and we can't rely on it. It's going to be all over the place throughout our journey, so it gets you started, but terrible to rely on to keep you going. So how do you overcome the lack of motivation? There's three things that I'll cover. Uh, what you need to overcome that lack of motiv motivation. The first one is self-discipline. So I'm pretty sure we've all heard of self-discipline at one point, but the definition of it is the ability to control one's feeling and overcome one's weaknesses. So during certain days when you're not wanting to work out or that that that's that weakness that we're talking about in this definition, the ab ability to control your feeling and overcome that 
thought of not wanting to work out or that thought of I'm tired or that thought of I could take today as a rest day or the thought of I'll just go grocery shopping tomorrow when you know that might make it a lot more difficult on your ability to meal prep for the week and it'll just push days back. So self-discipline is number one, number one by far. And it is, as you continue to be more disciplined on your own over time, the more, the better you get with it, the better you stay disciplined because all of a sudden you start to expect, you have the expectation out of yourself to accomplish what's in front of you. And what I've really seen help with self-discipline, being disciplined, is do things such as uh, create a vision board so you have an actual vision of where you're trying to go and to have a reminder each and every day why you should be doing these things. Whether on the vision board you have a picture of abs if you want abs or if you have a number on there for a weight goal you want to get to, a certain weight you want to squat, a certain body fat percentage, what whatever the fitness goal might be, put it on your vision board so you see it each and every day. And another one is taking before pictures. So I see so many people like scared to take before pictures because it's it's like a commitment to leave that person in the past. But when I make clients take pictures, I tell them like take the photos because it's it's committing to leaving this current version of you in the past. And when you do that, you're going to continue to remember that you took those pictures and you know that you'll have some pictures coming up, whether it's two weeks or four weeks, however you space them out. And just by knowing you have progress pictures coming up, it helps you stay a lot more disciplined to the task at hand and what you need to do in that moment of time to reach your goal. And another thing that is absolutely incredible that I learned in David Goggins' book, Can't Hurt Me, is the accountability mirror. So to put it simply, what he did or still does is he writes on sticky notes and puts them right on his mirror, his bathroom mirror, so he sees them each and every day. And these could be anything, like what you write write on the sticky notes could be anything from your insecurities or things you want to overcome to remind yourself that you are insecure of whatever that might be. And also dreams, goals. And in a way, it's kind of like a vision board, but one that you can adjust each and every week because sticky sticky notes obviously take take down and you could replace them with something else. Because over time, things will change. And once you like overcome that insecurity and accomplish a goal, you can take it down and replace it with a new one. So the accountability mirror will keep reminding you each and every day why you started your health and fitness journey and why you're doing what you're doing. So in order to stay self-disciplined and motivated, I highly encourage you to take before pictures to leave that version of you in the past, create a vision board to continue to remind yourself of why you started, have like a year long vision board and also the accountability mirror. So on your mirror, you're just going to write down things that you want to overcome, insecurities and also some goals, maybe some affirmations like I am strong, I am capable I can overcome this, whatever it might be, utilize these things and it'll make it so much easier to stay motivated and also hold yourself accountable. So that gets us into the the next thing that I believe you need in order to overcome lack of motivation, it's accountability. So this is the thing that I lacked most throughout the first six to seven, seven years of my fitness journey because the people I surrounded myself, they didn't really push me to want to go to the gym. They were doing the exact opposite of that. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that because, hey, with living a balanced lifestyle with alcohol, we have friends that tend to be bad influences. And I'm not going to say I'm always a good influence, but 
when we surround ourselves with people that enjoy drinking, going out to eat, the accountability to be fit and healthy is not going to be there compared to like having a, a strict health and fitness lifestyle. And the accountability I now have today, which it's absolutely amazing. It's you guys. You guys are my coach and it is, it's great. You guys hold me accountable because there's days where I'm not feeling like working out. I'm not wanting to meal prep, but then I always think like I have this following and they expect things out of me. Maybe they don't expect it, but it makes me think that you guys all expect it out of me to get my workout in, to meal prep, to get my water in, get quality sleep, and also just set myself up for success and live that never off track mindset. So having you guys there with me on Instagram and just listening to this podcast, I I can't thank you guys enough because it's been life changing. Right when I started this Instagram, my Instagram profile, Harrison Z Fit, I automatically became like committed to the long term because that's when I knew like everyone was expecting me to stay on top of my game. Like whether I would have two to three days off, I would just think like, okay, well, I, I got to hold my, I'm, I'm being held accountable because I have all these people with the expectation of me to get in my workout to post something about health and fitness and also hold me accountable to learning, constantly learning so I can provide even more value to you guys. So there's a couple sources of accountability that I, I'm going to recommend here. The first one is to simply make a bet with somebody or just say that you'll give them $500 if you don't go work out five days a week for the next four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, 10 weeks, however long you want to make that and make that amount of money a very motivating amount that you will not want to lose. Like if it's only 20 bucks, then you might not care enough at all. You wouldn't care at all. Like, oh, it's just $20. They probably won't even remember it. And so that that's another thing. You need to choose somebody that will hold you to it. Like a good friend that'll hold you to it and say, well, you got to give me that money. We made the bet. We shook on it. So bet on yourself to accomplish these things. And I, I can almost guarantee that you're going to want to work out on those days that you aren't feeling motivated. So if your motivation's only on like a, a 15 out of 100 and you've only worked out three weeks so far and it's already, or three days so far and it's already Friday, you're probably going to go work out even though you aren't feeling motivated. So bet on yourself and make sure it's with someone that will hold you to it. The other source of accountability is to hire a coach, find a coach. I don't care if it's me or not, but make sure it's somebody that you can relate to and someone that will hold you accountable. So just having a structured plan and investing in, in a coach is going to want, it's going to make you want to stick to it and to know that there's a person that is expecting you to do these things. And especially if they're pretty experienced and educated, you know that if you put all of the resources they provide to use, that you will see results. And I've honestly, I've never had a coach before, but like I mentioned earlier, you guys are basically my coach because you're, you're my accountability. I feel like you're expecting me to do everything to support my health and fitness, whether it is just to live with the never off track mindset, just go work out and meal prep, like get it done, get it done because you guys expect it. So for accountability, bet on yourself or find a coach. And the last thing you need for overcoming the lack of motivation is gain social support. And this is kind of related to accountability, but surround yourself with people that have similar goals and that will support you to get to those goals. So living with the balanced lifestyle and um, constantly being around people that 
want to get drinks, go out for drinks, have a great time every weekend, they're not going to be the best source of social support for you. So it's always important to find a couple people, at least two, two to three people even that have similar goals that will hold you accountable. They're your social support, the people that surround you. And you know, when you see them doing something, it's going to make you want to go do that thing as well. Like whether it's working out, if they're working out and you're not feeling it that day, it's just a really good reminder seeing that friend or whoever it might be working out to help you gain that little bit of motivation to just go do the dang thing. So, and that's the main, the main reason why I created the fit party, like the community of my clients is for the social support because we all have very similar goals and values as well. So everybody within, we're all striving to reach this goal, but also to live a very fun lifestyle without any restrictions. And we're always posting our goals. We're posting our struggles even, and we're relying on each other. We're leaning on each other to help hold us accountable and also keep us motivated. So just by seeing each and every client um, work out and track their meals, it motivates me personally to keep doing it. And the Snapchat group has been amazing for simple gym selfies or meal preps. And it's great also seeing like everybody else like have a beer on the weekend, crack a beer and just enjoy life, but also be ready to conquer the next day, the next week and live that never off track mindset. So the social support is very crucial. Surround yourself with like-minded people that have very similar goals. So those are the three things that you need to overcome that lack of motivation. So when that time comes during this week, when you're not feeling motivated, remember this. And I know I'm not going to be motivated all week, but I have you guys. You guys are my coach. You're my accountability. And I can't thank you enough. Like I said, so stop looking at everybody else's fitness journey and assuming that they're always motivated because in reality, they're not. They really aren't. I'm not. I'm not going to claim that I always feel good. I always feel like I want to work out. Like I always am like so stoked to meal prep and get everything done to support my health and fitness. But then again, I have self-discipline, the accountability, and social support, which makes it extremely easy. And I know over the next 30 years, I'm not going to miss like three days in a row of working out. There's no way because I have the right people around me that are supporting me and keeping me going. So if you can rely solely on self-discipline to keep you going when you're not feeling motivated, awesome. But if you can't rely on that completely, find your accountability and find your social support. And we'll end the episode there. I hope you have an amazing week and I'll talk to you next week. Thank you so much for listening today. If you're getting value out of the podcast and want to work closely with me on how to build the body of your dreams by balancing life and fitness, as well as become a part of the absolute best fitness community out there, what I want you to do is go to my Instagram at HarrisonZFit and DM me with the words fit party. My mission in life is simple, to help others find the best version of themselves while enjoying all aspects of life. We'll see you in the next episode.